Look at this one. Hi there folks and welcome to another episode. Anyway, for some reason this motor just stopped running. This is a little three horse Coleman. I don't know what brand. It's a Coleman go-kart. But uh, yeah, it's just a three horse power overhead valve motor. And I went over to his house and checked it out. We pulled the valve cover off over there. And lo and behold, the valves quit going up and down. And when you pulled it, it had no compression. So we're going to dig into it today and find out what happened. So follow along. We'll get you in here. We'll do a little time lapse. I'm going to bring you around to the other side here and show you what I've done so far. And then we'll move on from there. All right. What we've got here done so far, this is pretty simple. Pull a nut off here, slide the wheel off. And we broke the, we took the master links out of the two chains here, pulled that off. So that's all cleared. I didn't waste your time seeing any of that. You got your jack shaft here because this thing's been gear reduced a little bit. But what we're going to do now is pull this nut off, bolt off. A little, looks like a little, uh, what do you call them things? Snap rings. Pull them off, slide this off. This will allow me to take these four bolts here, pull this jack plate completely off. I'm going after splitting the case back here because we got to see what went wrong inside to make them valves quit uh, pulsating like they should. So let's dig into that now. All right, folks, we got this crankcase all pulled apart. I'll back away and show you the all the what's going on here. But first thing we discovered, I'm going to show you this little piece right here. See if I can get it right down here so you can see what's going on. So see this little hole right here? That's where this little nugget used to be. And what that's from, as you can see over here, there's another little boss right here, another one up here, maybe here in this area. But those are designed to be where bolts go. And when the bolts are too long, so there's four bolts that holds this. So this is the, let's call it the jack shaft plate because you got your main drive sprocket here and you got a jack shaft here with a bigger sprocket that goes down to the wheel. And it's the same thickness all the way around, yet four different length bolts here. Why? I have no idea. Obviously this one was too long and it, when they tightened it up with their little impacts at the factory or however they do it, they pop that out, which caused that to float around inside this crankcase. Now this might be a little hard to see, but you can see a little, there's a little dent right there and a little scrape right here on this piece here, which should have a lot of little fresh broken casting. Look here, you can see where it's shiny. So this thing broke off in the 35 minutes that this thing ran, broke off, bounced around in here, hit a few things. And the reason it lost compression is the cam shaft. We noticed, that, look at that. Spins inside the gear. <laughs> that shouldn't happen. And you can see that, I, I, I don't know how these are manufactured, whether they're, they gotta be over molded because there's a piece here that's probably the drive pin that's molded into this thing when this whole gear is molded onto this camshaft that sheared off. Now, did it shear off because this little piece of metal got in here somewhere or it's just a super cheap, crappy design and just broke? I don't know. So now we got to see if we can get us a new timing gear cam assembly, possibly. Uh, preferably not plastic, but we'll see what's available. And the case that has this piece broken out of it, we'll see if we can get a new case. If not, I'm going to use some of my uh, propane or what I should call it, a map gas welding torch and some of that uh, welding rod and fill that in. Because I noticed when we pulled this bolt out here, let's see here, let me get it back up here, I'll show you. When I was pulling this piece off, which obviously uses this bolt here, 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 and here, when I pulled this bolt out, oil come running out of here. Well, that shouldn't do that. <laughs> kind of crazy. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the saga of what went on with this inside this little motor and why the valves quit moving. And uh, don't know if the broken piece that was inside there, that the bolt broke off, caused the damage inside there, or did that just come loose and then the side effect was 
the plastic gear gave way anyway. Who knows? It wouldn't take much pressure at all to take care of the uh, breaking and shearing that little pin. It's all plastic, no metal in there. So, but that's, you know, they're getting one of these inexpensive little motors that Coleman's putting on here. And uh, quite frankly, not doing the Coleman name any favors. So this is going to be part one. Part two, we'll see you hopefully in a week or two. We'll see how long it takes us. we got to try to find parts, uh, source some parts, um, and see if we can get this thing put back together with maybe some a better cam gear set up with a, with a uh, metal gear. Don't know for sure. I'm going to, as soon as I find out where we're going to get these parts, and if they're better parts, I'll let you all know where they came from. There'll be links below because you may have a kid that got this uh, little Coleman go go go-kart for a present for Christmas or their birthday or just for fun and 35 minutes later it takes a crap on you so personally seeing what I've seen here stay away uh, but what you can do possibly is do a little bit of preventative stuff if you buy one on the cheap to fix something before the engine goes I don't know anyway there'll probably be other videos between part one and part two but you guys tune in. I appreciate you watching. You guys are great out there. Uh, I, I bring you guys a variety of different things to watch uh, between the outboard motors and some gun stuff and some just general repair on cars, engines, generators, different things. I'm going to bring to you folks what comes to me and what happens in my life and things I need to fix that I think might benefit you or you might, you know, just entertaining to watch possibly. I don't know. But anyway... Get out there and have some fun. And if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. See you on the next video. I'm out of here. Okay, it's about a week later now. And my buddy tried to get warranty work on this old Coleman golf cart engine that took a crap. Um, not getting a lot of response from the, uh, let's call it the go-kart maker. Or the place that does the warranty work. Or the manufacturer or whatever. But anyway, zero luck on getting any kind of warranty work done. So what he has done is went and bought a Predator motor from Harbor Freight. The Predator motor looks like a direct match, maybe made by the same manufacturer for all I know. But uh, so we're gonna do an engine swap now because this is too busted. After 35 minutes of use, it is broken beyond repair or the ability to get parts at this moment. Now, if you guys know where to get parts for these little Coleman three horse motors, because all this needs is a new cam and I can fix the crankcase, uh, and we'll be, it'll be back up and running again. But what I don't like is this plastic cam gear, weak point for sure. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and finish. What you're going to see in the upcoming time lapse is us pulling this motor down. I'm going to come in here and show you something a little closer to what I'm going to have to do to take the motor off. It's very, very simple. So let's look at it right now. Now, there isn't much to these things. As you can see here, we've got a throttle cable that sneaks right in here. We're gonna undo this little screw here and this clamp and that cable will come off. And then there's two wires right here. There's a ground wire that we'll take loose and then we'll unplug this positive wire here. This is your kill switch. Basically all it's doing is grounding out your ignition so it doesn't throw a spark and the motor dies. That's all it is to the wiring and there's gonna be, there's only four bolts holding this motor in, front and back, two in the front, two in the back. We're gonna take those out. We'll, set, we'll pull this motor out of place and it'll be all ready for the new Harbor Freight Predator motor. All right, folks, here's the new Predator engine. Look at this one. Looks just like this one, but less busted. Old, old and busted, new hotness. There we go. Let's crack this bad boy up and see what we got. Oh, the other cool thing about the Predator motor, as my buddy just found out, get a one or a two year warranty so you can run the living piss out of this thing and take it back even comes with a spark plug wrench some mounting hardware sweet Woo. you guys smell that it's that new motor smell that's awesome before use, fill gas here, add engine oil below. 
Those are just mere suggestions. Well, I'll take a little quick look-see over here. Yep, both overhead valves. That's close enough match for me. Let's put it on. Shaft comes with a key already installed. Excellent. And uh, no oil leaking out of it. That's a good thing. Because it doesn't have any yet. The only thing we need to change is on this particular motor here. And before you guys start leaving all kinds of nasty comments about this isn't a motor, it's an engine, I don't care. It spins and runs and makes things move. It's an engine or a motor. I'm not worried about the technical terms. So whoever's bleep blopping down below about that, go ahead and do it. I love it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> all right. The other thing we want to do is this. We want this pull start right now is pointing toward the front, which makes it hard to get past the roll cage that's up here. So we're going to undo the bolts and we're going to rotate this just a little bit. Get this pull start where we want before we stick this motor engine. Or let's just call it a engine. Let's put the engine on. That's going to be on one of my shirts. All right. Without further ado, let's rip into it. I'm going to show you a little something here. These motors or engines or engines are very similar to one another, but just enough off from one another. As you can see here, this bolt rubs here so where I put this black line I'm going to have to file this slot open just a little bit and the upper side of this one to get it lined up the bottom ones line up just fine so I'm going to do that to make this work to adapt this predator motor where the old Coleman used to be the other thing we're going to have to do is on that other predator motor does not have a throttle control so this is the predator motor it does not have the throttle control linkage you need to be able to run your throttle cable up so we're going to swap these two pieces out so we have throttle cable control but other than that they're very very similar crazy how close they are so that tells you one thing they didn't come off the same production line for that part of it anyway and the other part of it that we just showed you on the other side also the holes would line up dead on if they came off the same production line same casting somebody's copying somebody and as far as we know, so far, Predator engines are much better than the old Coleman engines, as history would show, recent history would tell us anyway. So what we're needing is this piece right here. So you can see where the cable comes through, cable clamp here. So we're going to take, we, the governor that's on it is fine. That's already on the other one. So we're going to take this little bolt here out, and there's one right, in, right underneath here. Take that off and this little part will come off. We'll unhook the spring, which is already done. And we'll just do that swap onto this other uh, engine and we'll be fine. All right, folks. Now we have some time lapse in there. I just want to do a quick recap on everything we did and some of the little nuances you're going to run into when you're messing around with this Predator Coleman swap situation. We did find out that the bolt in the end of the Predator motor is a 5 16 24 right hand thread. And so I had, luckily I had a little uh, socket head cap screw. So we stuck that on there. Now the pulley's in place, it's not going anywhere. The only other modification, as I showed you earlier, we're slotting these two upper slots here, which adjust this chain. So that slides back and forth. Once you get that adjusted, then you take this, the bolts that hold the motor in place, and you adjust this chain. So then you slide that front to back to get that one to where it is. We've got that all adjusted. We did do the swap on the throttle. Uh, and I'll bring you around the other side and show you that real quick. Basically, all we did was swap this plate right here. The original governor stays in place. 
the same two bolts lined up on the cover just fine. We bolted that in place, hooked our throttle up. So now when we push our throttle, our go pedal, everything works like it should. We did rotate this. On the other engine motor, Mingen, this was rotated 90, so this was basically resting up against here. Right now it's straight up and down. This is gonna be perfect for pulling it like that. And it's gonna rest there in a nice location. I don't know why they didn't do that originally on the Coleman. Well, let's just put that to Coleman Engineering, right? You know, they kind of gave up after the Lantern. They had a pretty good thing back then. Just quit while you're ahead, Coleman. Anyway, we're ready to go. We can adjust our maximum throttle stop when we want to, when we get this thing where you're, whenever we're out there on the road playing around with it, right? The kill switch that came on the motor, we disabled that one. Basically, it took the two wires that came off of it, disconnected them, and connected the wires coming off the go-kart back in, so we still have the kill switch up on the dash. Other than that, we're ready to rock and roll. We filled her with some 30-weight oil. We put some non-alcohol gas in here, and we're going to set this on the floor and see if we can start it. So guys, take a second while we're setting up and doing that and uh, take a guess at how many pulls is it going to take to start it. My guess is uh, two. Oh, my O-ring! <laughs> Lord oh. have mercy. All right, ignition's on. You going to do the honors? Put the choke on. Nope. Starts that way. There you go. Since this doesn't have a fuel on off, it's just going to be on all the time. The carburetor should be full by now. Give her a pull. Take the choke off. There we go. Great improvement over the other motor. This this one runs now. It seems to idle pretty good. Just the go kart wheel. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! There's some good old mid range octane fumes. Oh, I can Go ahead and kill it. Well, you guys might think we're running this chain just a little bit loose. You can see how it is right now. But then we'll roll it around here. Oh, let's see here. About right there. Gets kind of tight, but not real tight. Well, that's because this sprocket here is not running concentric with the axle. That's just by uh, just the manufacturing of how they manufactured that sprocket. It wasn't dead on accurate. But if you watch right here, I'll put my finger right here and roll this around. You can see the gap move that's how out of round or out, out of concentric the idea of that bore is to the actual sprocket teeth but so you can only work with what you got well that wraps it up for this episode folks i hope that you found that informative and helpful uh, this is a the predator should make a pretty good motor engine mingen i'm doing this with my hands because i'm gonna put mingen right there on the screen anyway this was a fun little swap, pretty easy to do. A couple little tweaks we had to do, but looks like it's gonna work just fine. Hopefully he gets hours and hours and hopefully years of uh, enjoyment out of this. The nice thing is all the little tweaks we did, if this engine goes after about nine or 10 months, it's got a one year warranty on it. We'll take it back and you can just bolt another one right in, do the same swapping of the parts we did on this and uh, you're good to go. You guys get out there and have some fun, enjoy life. This is Michael saying if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. We'll see you later. I'm out.